Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. It's part 22 of the real working Iron Man inspired exosuit. So last time we got motors that were powerful enough and actuators and sensors that are responsive enough for it to move when I move and I can just about walk along in it. We've got quite a lot of things we need to do today to make it a bit better and tidy it up. Uh, mainly my feet don't fit in the stirrups properly, they're really loose and so basically we had some problems there with actually pressing the sensors and also the whole thing's keeling over backwards, we've got to adjust its posture and we really need to rebuild the motor mounts as well. I'm also going to be fitting myself into the suit with this industrial harness that I've got hold of which has got loads of metal anchor points all over it and loads of metal buckles so it's pretty tough, it's actually for working at height so it can suspend you on the back if you fall down. So that's going to fix me into the hips and save me having to hold onto the suit so much. But first of all, we've got to look at those motor mounts. So last time I upgraded and tested the motors and we've got these much bigger brushless motors now which can handle the load. But basically my mounts were just glued to the old mounts and they're really wobbly. The belts are a bit slack so the belt just skips around. So we need to redesign that mount, at least with 3D printing, just so the belts aren't loose and it works reliably. So I've removed the wobbly mess of plastic there, which is a bracket attached to a bracket attached to a bracket, and I've made something much simpler. So what I've found is the bearing blocks for these ball screws have a hole in each side. I can put some studding through. So I've just made this really simple bracket that's going to attach to the studding. That means I can move it in and out and space it. And that will, of course, hold my motor right next to the ball screw attached to the same piece of metal and the belt will go straight on there and that should be less wobbly also it's got the studding in so when that's bolted up it should be nice and firm. Right that's put on and um, that's incredibly good actually that's going to be fine. The belt's nice and tight and obviously I can tension it by just winching it out on the studding if I want to. The only issue I've got now is there's nowhere to mount the motor driver now all that silly plastic isn't there. I just need a little plate to hold the motor driver with a bit of strain relief with a zip tie and I've got those obviously on each side on all four of the legs there so that we can just hold those motor drivers and the cables don't get tangled in the mechanism. So now those motor mounts are really much better, they're extremely firm and the belts are nice and tensioned so now it's extremely responsive. I've just repostured the suit slightly so the legs are slightly bent to start with which should mean that they um, can fold more easily rather than doing it from completely straight and also the suit is now leaning forward very slightly so I've pulled up my parallelograms a bit so it's not falling over backwards because in the last testing you'll notice I was kind of pulling it along and I was leaning forward and the whole thing was falling over backwards. So I just want to give that a little walking test for now I've disabled those extra sensors I put in for the forward and back motion of the legs so I'm just going to try lifting my legs and walking around a bit and then we'll come back to putting those back in when I've sorted out my foot strapping and my body strapping. So that seems pretty good, it's much more responsive and there's obviously loads of problems I had last time with the belt skipping due to the dodgy mounts. So all of that's fixed and now it just basically does move when I move. We need to sort out those pedals because there's still gaps around my feet and maybe not in the most efficient positions. But now we can actually get on with fixing myself in and fixing my feet in so I can reliably press those sensors. What's that piece of blue tape? It's actually a really critical piece of blue tape. It's holding the end of the string, which is tied around this screw that goes round the joint and goes to the feedback pot that gives me the joint positions. So if the string falls off, then the pot doesn't turn and the things just run their end stops because they can never get to the position they're supposed to be. So it's actually a really critical piece of blue tape. I should probably change that piece of string with a belt or something at some point because if it falls off at the moment it's a disaster and there's four of them, one on each motor. Right, let's talk about this harness again. So this is actually a fall arrest harness which is why it's got this loop in the back here which um, is actually for holding you up if you were to fall down. So for that reason it's not totally ideal because it doesn't really support things being pulled down on it which is what I want, it's for things being pulled up. So it's a three point harness with three metal loops, the one on the back and the two on the side. Has got a waist strap However, that's kind of not actually linked to the shoulder straps. Those just sort of go through, but they do go around your legs and back up. So these anchor points here actually pull up around the legs. So those I think I can actually use for lifting something up, or I could attach those to these loops, and that would kind of give me an up and down thing. Uh, we are going to use those to fix myself in side to side, and I think I'm going to use these, probably loop through here or something, to actually lift the suit up. And we'll see how it goes. Obviously, when you pull these, it actually pulls all the way around to the legs and back up to the waist. So it's kind of giving support. It's just a bit of a roundabout way of doing it. 
So just trying to work out where to anchor these things. I would take them to the front here, but I think that's going to be weird because it's going to pull everything back when I lift it. So they need to be either where I was holding on, which is directly in line with my body so I can lift up the legs as I walk, or they need to go back, I guess, to kind of pull me into it. So perhaps right back here, if I could anchor them back there somewhere, that kind of pulls me back in. It pulls my back into the back of this. And that seems to be quite a good posture, actually. That feels quite good. And I've got that padded strap that's resting on all the brackets that are in the back here. So I've got a piece of webbing strap there, which is linked around there. And it's got a piece of studding here, which is the main axis of the suit. So that stops that pulling up. And I can put some sort of toggle on the top and put it through the loop on the harness. Right, so the suit's not powered up. I've just hooked myself in there, though, to see how that feels. So... Yeah, it feels pretty much like I don't need my hands now and I can lift those those legs up on each side. So I think that's going to be all right. Um, the legs you'll notice are coming apart a bit and that's because at the back there's bungee cords that help the lean side to side. And those are also dealing with uh, keeping those legs in the middle. So at the moment they're pitching in a bit, so I need to do something about that back mechanism. But for now I'm probably just going to put a bungee on the front there to hold those together. Um, and just counter the thing at the back. So uh, that may be a feature or we might do something else around the back. So let's do that and power it up. Right, so pretty happy with that, apart from the bungee falling off. Sorry, it's yellow and everything else is red and black. This uh, strapping harness is quite colour coordinated as well. But obviously that's temporary just to hold the legs together. Um, and you can see the only thing I can't really do is turn on the spot without using my hands. And that's mainly because my feet aren't fixed in. So I can't um, move the suit when I move my legs like that because they just swivel in the stirrups and the legs don't move. But once I strap my feet in properly, I should be able to do the whole thing with no hands. So obviously sidestepping works and turning on the spot. And then we need to look again at those sensors for walking forwards. There have been quite a few good suggestions about what we should do with the foot strapping solution, including putting the shoe on a slider that slides backwards and forwards to measure the kick forward and the kick back, attaching the toe down and then measuring the heel lift, uh, which is probably a pretty good idea. The only issue I guess is getting it to spring back to the middle and have a neutral position so I'm not sort of sliding on my feet like roller skates to try and locate the middle so the legs aren't moving backwards and forwards. I haven't quite decided what to do yet, but I think I want to keep it quite simple to resolve the issue that my feet just aren't fixed in properly. So for now, I'm just going to try putting tighter straps on, basically. We're going to put another plate on that holds that strap so it holds my foot right into the corner, see if I can rotate my legs with that, and see how I get on pushing all of the sensors. Now, these sensors are currently turned off. I'm not sure if they're in the right place or if they're being used in the right way, so we may have another think about that in a moment. So that seems to work well enough. The only thing is I can feel the uh, nut heads there on my feet. So I probably need some more padding in there, but basically um, I can turn my feet and I can walk pretty well. And I zip tied my bungee on so it doesn't fall off. So that's um, just a temporary solution for that for now. So now the only thing remaining is the ability to walk forwards basically. And I put those sensors for kick forward and kick back on the ankles, but I'm not sure they're in quite the right place. I'm gonna leave those there for now but I think I might have another solution. Now, when I originally fitted the Hall Effect sensors, I actually put some of these sliders on the hips as well, which were gonna have more magnets and more Hall Effect sensors. And the original plan was to have one in front as well, so that I could measure if I push forward or I push backwards. But I think I can get away with just one at the hips, 
which is basically sprung. So um, if I lean on it, it pulls it away from the sensor. And if I don't lean on it, so if I'm leaning forwards, it comes forwards and it can measure if I'm leaning forwards or back or if I'm pulling the suit to make it go along. So along with the sensor on the foot to tell if the foot's on the ground, we can make the legs do pretty much what we want based on whether I'm leaning on that sensor or not. And so it should be able to work out whether it needs to walk forward or not. So I've turned this around the other way. So my Hall effect sensors are actually behind these and now they spring forward. So the rest position is there. But what I've done is attach this Velcro waist belt. So if I pull it forward, it will know the suit needs to walk forward basically, uh, rather than me having to press back. And if I don't, it walks forward. So it's the other way around to what I said, but it's gonna be much more natural to pull on this thing to have it going forward. So I've now wired those up to analog ins and done some coding. So basically what happens is if you pull this, nothing happens and if i tread on both feet so both feet are on the ground also nothing happens but if i tread on one foot and pull it it should twist the suit one way and if i pull on the other one and do it it twists the suit the other way so depending on which foot is on the ground it should take steps so we'll give that a go Well, it definitely goes forward, um, that's pretty good. And um, it is proportional, though I was pulling on there as hard as I could, so those are currently the biggest steps. Obviously, we could make them bigger or smaller. Um, and it felt okay, even with those really big steps, it felt okay when I was doing it, it looked a bit crazy. Um, half the issue really is the actual uh, flex in the suit here, which is of course so I can rotate the legs to turn on the spot, but when I'm walking, they tend to offset a bit. So uh, we get that, and there's also a squeak you can hear that's coming from somewhere up here and I think there's some squeaky wood and some screws that need tightening up or something like that. You can hear one leg is making a funny sound. So there's a few things to adjust, but on the whole, I think the principle of kind of pulling that along and lifting your legs um, kind of makes it work for a basic homemade exosuit. So I'm pretty happy with that. So one thing you'll notice is that I don't really know what to do with my arms when I'm walking in this, even though I've got this thing supported on the harness now, it's much more natural to put my hands somewhere and it's also still easier to help rotate it with my hands on the legs here. So next time we're actually gonna look at some of the upper body structure, some of the design involved with that. I want to put arms on it, sort of big power motorized arms. It was gonna be that my hands were in the arms, but it may be I have some extra handles I can hold or somehow they're latched, or maybe the arms are in fact attached to these rotating parts where the legs are, so they can rotate around the same time as my legs when I do this and that will give me a bit more stability just on these legs because there is some flex in them. So that's the end of this episode. I'm really happy with how it's going so far. Obviously, it's been built on a relative budget, but it looks like I can do most of the functions I need for moving around and having it walk when I walk. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also, it's really important to say that all of my main build projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me, all my videos early, and various other things that are listed on the page. All right, that's all for now.